हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ हसोष पलवेला फ्रॉम डॉक्टर हरि सिंह गौर विश्वविद्यालय टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द सेल कॉर्पोरेशन इन इम्यून रिस्पॉन्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस नो अबाउट व्हाट इज इम्यून रिस्पॉन्स इम्यून रिस्पॉन्स इज हाउ योर बॉडी रिकॉग्नाइजेस एंड डिफेंड्स इटसेल्फ अगेंस्ट द बैक्टीरिया वायरसेस एंड अदर हार्मफुल फॉरेन सब्सटेंसेस this process is an elaborate interplay between antigen non defenses and b and t lymphocytes now let's talk about some cells involved in immune response first one the immunological competence cell the immune competence refers to the ability of our body to react against any foreign element any cell that plays a role in successful immune response that can be categorized as immunologically competent cell let's take an example if any microorganisms enter into our body the tissue macrophages engulfs them and conveys first local response here macrophages is considered as immune competent cells second the thymus and central lymphoid tissue the central lymphoid tissue is also known as primary lymphoid tissue where primary lymphoid tissue includes thymus and bone marrow here here the sites where t and b lymphocytes are generated and matured there the bone marrow and hematopoiesis bone marrow is found in the medullary cavities where the center of the bones is to be known hematopoiesis is done here where the blood cells are produced structurally it consists consists of two cells stromal cells and pancreal pancre parenchymal cells where the hematopoietic cells is done both one is macrophages these are specialized cells involved in phagocytosis which is phagocytosis means engulfing and destruction of harmful foreign organisms macrophages can also present antigens to t cells which initiate inflammation by releasing cytokines some types of macrophages are alveolar macrophages which present in lung alveoli kaffer cells in cell in liver microglia which is also an macrophage present in the central nervous system and splenic macrophages from spleen now let's discuss about the mechanism of cell cooperation in immune response here we got t and b lymphocyte cooperation activation of b lymphocytes cooperation among a antigen presenting cells and t and b lymphocytes and the specificity of cooperation first we discuss about the t and b lymphocyte cooperation b lymphocyte have two important roles they access antigen presenting cells and the second one is they produce antibodies they have sla2 sla2 means swine leukocyte antigen class 2 in their membranes so they can recognize the antigens even though in its native form native form means in a free form of a free form of antigens now activation of b lymphocytes here we are discussing only about the t cell independent activation okay now let's skip this scary scary part and we will i will explain you in the diagrammatic representation when a native form of antigen is reacted here here is the native form react with the surface immunoglobulins of b lymphocytes here are the surface immunoglobulins of b lymphocytes 
the antigen is ingested and fragmented and associated to the SLA2 markers here they are and then expressed and then express it to the membrane of the B lymphocyte once this happened the production of immunoglobulins will start the production of immunoglobulins will start here where the CD4 plus lymphocyte gets stimulated which results in the initiation of antibody production okay Antibody production starts with IgM, immunoglobulin M. If the antigenic stimulates continues, the IgM change changes to form other immunoglobulins like IgG, IgE and IgA. <coughs> this process is similar to that originated by the antigen presenting by APCs, antigen presenting cells. But it's more effective due to the fact that only B lymphocyte reacts with antigen. B lymphocytes when stimulated by an antigen change their structure and function. The B lymphocyte proliferate originating several clones then it's transformed developing the rough surfaced endoplasmatic reticulum and becoming a Plasma, plasmatic cell. They can directly react with the BCRs, B cell receptors, by cross-linking their cell surface immunoglobulins, stimulating several BCRs at the same time. So they induce enough stimulus to initiate the antibody production. But they are only able to produce IgMs, not at any other immunoglobulins. Here we can see the graph representation of primary and secondary response against T independent antigens where IgM only IgM is, is seen in both of the responses. Cooperation among APC and T and B lymphocytes. Here APCs means again I am telling you antigen presenting cells. Antigens can also be bound by macrophages and dendritic cells. These act as antigen presenting cells. These APCs belong as lymphocytes to the exclusive group of immune cells that express in the membrane SLA2. Thus they are only cells able to present antigens to the T lymphocyte CD4 plus markers. Antigen binding occurs by an unknown mechanism which is an opposite mechanism of B lymphocytes that usually needs a large quantity of antigenic material. Here the antigen is engulfed inside the vesicle and transported to the lysosomes where it will be digested into different enzymes. Fragments of the digested enzymes antigens will be associated to SLA2 here are the SLA2s which are transported to the macrophage membrane where they will be recognized by T lymphocytes CD4 plus receptors here when these cells interact both APCs and T lymphocytes activated and cytokines are released this allows the stimulation and proliferation of T lymphocyte CD4 plus markers. At this stage, CD4 plus lymphocytes can stimulate B lymphocytes for antibody production. Yes, this stimulation is mediated by SLA2 and the antigen and enhanced by the liberation of interleukins. Thus, the activation of T lymphocyte CD4 plus requires the performance of antigen presenting cells and the SLA2s. B lymphocyte activated by these mechanisms undergoing a proliferation process. Part of the resulting cells are transformed into plasmatic cells which secrete antibodies and some other remain as memory cells. 
these memory cells are further uh, helpful for the future purposes when an antigen is presented to the immune system for the first time a primary response is produced the primary response is mainly produced in the lymph nodes and spleen where the memory lymphocytes are produced during the primary response and they will remember each epitope structure for possible future infections as i said if the infection enters the organism again the secondary response is produced here during the secondary response the immunoglobulin globulins of m levels are similar to those of primary response but igg levels is much higher as remark here we can see in the secondary response as with the memory memory cells the igg response is much more higher than compared to the primary response other immunoglobulins are also produced such as iga and igg in the secondary response the secondary response is mainly appears in the bone marrow followed by the spleen and lymphonodes thank you for listening